whole bunch of people are noticing that ever since they switched to Betaflight 4.2, Crossfire RSSI seems like it's reading way lower than it used to. Did Betaflight 4.2 make your Crossfire weaker? Did it make your range less? That is the question we're gonna dive into today. And on top of that, what happened to LQ? LQ used to be like 100, 200, 300%, and now it's like a number and a colon and another number, yeah. Betaflight's made some changes to Crossfire, but they are changes for the better, and we're gonna talk all about them. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. I wanna start this video by going through the different ways that you can get Crossfire RSSI into your flight controller. And we'll talk about which of those ways is the best and we will look at whether they produce consistent RSSI results. Why would it matter? Isn't RSSI just RSSI? Shouldn't it be the same number no matter how you get it into the flight controller? Well, that's a very interesting question and let's figure out if that's actually true. And before Betaflight 4.1, the way to get RSSI into your flight controller was to go into the Crossfire configuration, go into the Nano RX or whatever receiver you've got, and then you would go down to the channel map and you would set one of your aux channels to be either RSSI, LQ, or RSSI slash LQ. After that, you would go into the Betaflight receiver tab and you would set your RSSI channel to, uh, in this case, it's gonna be aux four channel eight. And that will cause Betaflight to read that aux channel as your RSSI, which you can see here is at 100%. And this is the first place where people start to get a little bit misled about what the Crossfire RSSI is actually showing them. So RSSI slash LQ means that Crossfire is gonna show us a combination of RSSI and LQ link quality. And let's talk about what the difference between those two things is. RSSI is the raw signal strength. If you imagine somebody whispering in your ear versus screaming in your ear, it's just the raw amount of energy that you are getting. And obviously when it comes to uh, range and control link, more RSSI is better. Link quality refers to, basically it's like the signal to noise ratio. Here's a way of making that sort of make sense. Imagine somebody screaming into your ear, but at the same time, you're like at a super loud rock concert. So even though the fact that they're screaming in your ear, you still can't, can't make out what they're saying, right? That's a case where you have high RSSI, but also a high background noise level and your signal to noise ratio is bad and your signal is being corrupted. So RSSI is the raw signal strength. LQ is the healthiness of the signal, which if you have a higher RSSI, you are gonna tend to have a better LQ, but it's not always the case that high RSSI means high LQ. And on the flip side, and this is gonna become way more relevant later in the video as we get to the conclusion, if you have low RSSI, but good LQ, you're actually in a pretty good situation. Again, imagine a scenario where you're just in a normal quiet room and someone's just talking in a normal speaking voice. Well, your RSSI isn't that great, but you're still having a perfectly fine conversation. Your LQ is good and everything is great. So right now we're looking at RSSI slash LQ. And the reason that was made is that Betaflight doesn't have the ability to have two RSSI channels coming in. Apologies to those in the UK for just flipping you off. Betaflight doesn't have two RSSI aux channels. So if you've got two metrics that you want to monitor, signal strength and LQ, how do you do it? The way that this works more or less is that it shows you the most relevant of the two. If RSSI is low, but LQ is good, it shows you LQ. And that is why most people who fly using this metric see 99% RSSI all the time because most of the time, even as RSSI goes down, your LQ stays pretty good and you see 99% RSSI, but it's not 99% RSSI, it's 99% LQ. What would happen if we actually switch this from RSSI LQ over to just RSSI? Well, it's still showing 100% RSSI because we're literally just like 10 feet away from each other. Hold on, let me, let me tweak this a little bit. Well, okay, in order to demonstrate this point, 
I've turned the radio down to 25 milliwatts output power and I took it outside. I just set it in the front seat of my car. It's only about 20 feet away, but it is through a cinder block wall and of course the metal body of my car. And what I want you to see is that the RSSI is 60-70%, which might concern you if you're used to seeing 99% RSSI forever. Now here's why 88% RSSI shouldn't concern you in the slightest. Because RSSI drops off in a inverse exponential logarithmic. What happens is that when you are very, very close together, you have very high RSSI. And as you move apart, the RSSI drops off really quickly at first. You'll only see like 85, 90, 99% RSSI practically when the two antennas are touching. With Crossfire, with 900 megahertz and 250 milliwatts output power, you'll see it a little further. But if you ever look at like your 2.4 gigahertz FreeSky systems, you never see 99% RSSI unless they're like right up against each other. But as you get further and further away, that drop off flattens out. So you move 15 or 20 feet away and it goes down to 85% RSSI. And you're like, well, this is nothing. I lost 15% of my RSSI and I only went 20 feet. But then as you get further and further away, it plateaus and you go a kilometer and you're at like negative 70 or, or 70%. And you go two kilometers and you're at like 65%. You're like, oh, that's pretty good. That's not so bad. So RSSI is really misleading unless you've worked with decibels and RF signals before because it drops off really quickly when you're close up and then it slows down as you get further away. And if you're expecting to see 99% RSSI forever, that's just not going to happen. Physics won't allow that to happen. And that's one of the takeaways from this video. You never had 99% RSSI forever. You were probably just looking at LQ and you can have 99% LQ for a really long ways. Now I'm gonna go back to the receiver tab and I'm gonna turn off this RSSI channel because Betaflight 4.2 added the ability to read, shush now, because Betaflight 4.2 added the ability to read the RSSI and the LQ directly from the Crossfire telemetry. So if we go to the OSD tab here in the lower right is my RSSI percent, which is the thing that I've always been looking at in the past, but I can go over here on the left and scroll down and I can turn on the RSSI DBM value and the link quality parameter. And there they are in the middle of my screen. The first thing I notice when I go to this new method of getting RSSI is that the RSSI value has changed. If we look in the lower right hand corner of the screen at the RSSI percent, this should be the same number, whether we're getting it directly from Crossfire telemetry or whether we're getting it from the receiver via an RSSI aux channel and it isn't. Here we can see we're in the same room. It's reading 64%. Whereas I had to take the freaking thing out to my car and put it in the car to get the RSSI to go below 99% using the other method. So something's different, but I have no idea what it is. The other thing that's different is we have two new values here, uh, the LQ and the RSSI DBM. RSSI DBM is confusing to non-RF professionals because DBM start at like 20 and they count downwards to like negative 70, negative 80. So it's a really weird scale. So when we see here a value of negative uh, 43, that's actually a really strong signal. Uh, we would typically for, I don't know Crossfire's receive sensitivity, but for a typical RF device, like a Wi-Fi device, you would start to see signal loss around negative 70 to maybe negative 90 dBm. Negative 40 is pretty strong. So this DBM scale running from plus 20 to like minus something, that's confusing and might not be what you expect. But it is better to see DBM, the actual signal strength, instead of this weird percent value that who knows what it's like. How do you convert DBM to percent? Since you don't really know the ends of the scale, it's a little hard to reliably do that. And that may be why we're getting different percent values down here, depending on which way we get the value into the flight controller. The other thing that's changed is the LQ value, and the LQ value used to read from 0 to 300%, and here's how it breaks down. Crossfire has three what they call RF modes. In RF mode number two, you are running at 150 hertz, 
That is the fastest, lowest latency mode, but RF mode two only happens when you're relatively close to the Crossfire transmitter. The exact distance varies depending on how much output power you have and various other factors. RF mode number one has 50 hertz sampling, so it's higher latency, but it's much, much more reliable. And then RF mode zero is four hertz. Basically, it's just barely hanging on when it's in RF mode zero and you are really about to lose. You're just about to fail safe. The way that LQ used to work is from zero to 100% was RF mode zero. So you basically never wanted to see LQ below 100%. From 100% to 200% was RF mode one, that's 50 hertz mode. And from 200% to 300% was RF mode two, that's the 150 hertz mode. The way it works now is that they're just showing you the RF mode, which in this case is two, and the link quality, which in this case is 100. So that would equate to 300 in the old way. If we saw RF mode one and LQ of 100, that would equate to 200 in the old way, and so on. So how do you interpret these numbers? What is the final takeaway here? The final takeaway is that you should be paying attention to LQ most of all. I don't know why the RSSI percent is different in Betaflight 4.2 where you're reading directly from the receiver versus using the aux channel. I don't know what a bad, what fail, at what DBM will Crossfire fail safe? Is it, it's not negative 40, is it negative 60, 70, 80? I don't care. Because at the end of the day, as long as my LQ is good, I am pretty much good to go and I know I'm not gonna fail safe. So my suggestion is turn off the RSSI. Just look at the LQ and what is a good or a bad LQ. The advice is the same as it always was. As long as you are in RF mode two, don't worry about LQ or RSSI, your link is wonderful. If you fail down from RF mode two to RF mode one, now start paying attention to your LQ. And as long as the LQ is above about 70%, you're still fine. If your LQ is down around 70% in mode one, or if your LQ ever goes to mode zero, you need to start thinking about turning around. But as long as your LQ is above about, let's say 80% in mode one, you are good. Another thing to keep in mind is that some people are going into their receiver config and they are manually setting their RF profile to 150 Hertz. The default is to have it on dynamic, which means it'll switch between 150 hertz and 50 hertz as it needs be. If you manually set this to 150 hertz, you will always have the lowest possible latency and the most consistent latency, which helps beta flight have smoother motors and so forth. But if you will not have the ability to fail safe from mode two down to mode one. You will simply go from mode two to no link at all. So if you've done that, then you would just need to be, you need to be looking at mode two with an LQ bit greater than about 80%. When it starts getting around 70%, you're starting to be in trouble. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope this video has helped clear up what is one of the most, the weirdest and most pressing questions people have had about Crossfire, which is number one, why is the RSSI not 99% forever? And number two, why is the RSSI different between Betaflight 4.2 and beta, and previously when you were using an aux channel. Actually, we didn't answer that question. But the real takeaway is forget about RSSI, just look at LQ and your life's gonna be good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.